And certainly the gospel today does not present a very pretty picture. As we say, see there, Jesus trying to teach the disciples about his own fate and how he would be the Messiah through his suffering and death. This is the second prediction of the Passion in Mark's Gospel. And once again, the disciples are kind of impervious to the message that Jesus is sharing with them. And instead, what are they talking about? <laughs> Who's going to be greatest in the kingdom? They're still expecting Jesus to come through on the great white horse, establish a wonderful kingdom, and they're going to be his top lieutenants. And who's going to have the right-hand side and who's going to have the left-hand side? It's that typical thing of one, up, one upmanship that they are arguing about there as they journey on the way. And Jesus becomes distressed at that. And he just asks them to take a few moments and think about it. And so he sits down. And that is the typical posture of a teacher during the time of Jesus was to be seated with his disciples in front of him. And he begins to teach them what really greatness is about. Greatness is not about power. Greatness is but not about accumulation of things. Greatness is not about position. It is not about human esteem, but rather it is about humble service. And he takes a little child and it's important for us to realize the attitude that they had towards children in those days. We tend to almost dote upon our children. But in those days, children were insignificant. They weren't considered that important. They were just kind of taken for granted. In fact, you'll notice in the gospel that it says, and Jesus took a little child and put it in front of them. They're referred to in the impersonal. And, and so a child was considered as helpless and really just as totally needy. And Jesus said, it's the one who receives the little child who truly is the greatest in the kingdom. It's the one who serves the needy, the one who serves the weak, the one who serves the vulnerable. That is the greatest in the kingdom. And so we are challenged by those words. We're challenged about our own life. Are we truly called to live a life of service? Where we recognize that really service is what it's about, foremost and utmost. And that's a challenge for us because we live in a world and a culture as did Jesus in which that was not the predominant thought. It rather was being served rather than serving. And we all know that that attitude of service is so important within our life. It's interesting that the two adult sacraments that we have in the church, matrimony and holy orders, are called sacraments of service. That they are primarily oriented towards service. Of a husband and a wife of being there to serve each other and together to serve their children, to reach out in caring love. First of all, to welcome those children into the world is to welcome Christ. And there's many ways, certainly through natural blood relationship, but also through adoption and, and through foster care and through so many other ways that we welcome children into our lives. But truly, Jesus wants us to see the vocation of marriage and family, those ways in which we strive to welcome the littlest ones as truly signs of his service. You know, I can't think of a parent whom I've ever talked to who has not at one time or another said to their child, I'm not your servant. But the fact is, you are their servant. And they know that. And that's okay, as long as you don't serve them all the time. Because the real challenge is that we serve in order to teach service. And that is the real challenge within our families, with our young people, to teach service. 
by example, by the way in which we live day in and day out, by reaching out even beyond the family in care for others. And that is one of the great responsibilities that we have as adults, is not only to be servants, but to teach service as well, and to enable others to truly recognize that it is in service that we really realize our deepest joy, our deepest happiness. It's in that which we give away that truly brings us fulfillment. It's only what we give away in this life that we will carry with us into eternal life. And so we are reminded of Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. We too are called not to come to be served, but to serve in the spirit of Christ Jesus.